much like mom's not home. Tell me why the best things feel so wrong. So basically, it's nearing the end of finals period right now, and I realize I've not been filming anything because I've just been so stressed and so busy trying to uh, actually, you know, do well on my finals because apparently that's good. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been an absolute time. Wish I was filming more, but I wanted to at least put out kind of one video during finals period to kind of give you guys a quick update and let you guys know how stressed I am because I feel like that's important, you know, showing like. A lot of times it's like, I feel like these college vlogs are just like, oh, everything's so great, everything's so happy, but a lot of times I'm just like really, really stressed and don't have a lot of time to do much, but uh, I thought I'd give you guys a little peek into my life. So actually, one big thing, um, actually one of my classes didn't have a final exam, it had a final project. So this was my digital systems class, which is kind of a crash course in microprocessors, uh, concurrence, operating systems, and like uh, real-time scheduling and all that kind of cool stuff that probably is meaningless to you guys but anyways we had a final project me and my uh, one of my good friends Tommy it was actually a partner project so we we chose to make an 8-bit game emulator so I don't know if you guys have heard of like uh, something called chip 8 but basically chip 8 was like a it was a a kind of computer system that was used in this in the 70s to actually like run 8-bit video games so what we did is we implemented a basically a chip 8 virtual machine on an Arduino um, so yeah, it was close to 2,000 lines of code. Uh, the hardware itself wasn't that complicated. It's actually, it's actually right here. So the hardware only pretty much consisted of what? An LCD screen, a uh, driver for the LCD screen, the Arduino, and then like a button pad. Uh, so it was, it was interesting to say the least, but basically we, we implemented it first on a computer and got it to work with the like computer graphics and everything. And then honestly, the hardest part was taking all those keyboard inputs, taking all the, the graphics and stuff that worked on like a fast processor on a computer and then trying to get it to work on that tiny thing. So uh, I'll actually give you guys a little demo right now just to show you how it works. Uh, yeah, my room's an absolute mess. I normally try to clean my room for these videos to kind of make it seem like I'm, you know, living in somewhere that is actually functional, but uh, I'm not at the moment. I have no motivation nor need to clean my room because I'm just very sleep deprived. But anyways, I'm uploading a video right now, but you know, we can pull up the computer and get this going regardless. Um, yeah, what video is this? Wake, why waking up at 5 a.m. in college sucks. Um, we're always on the grind, whether it seems like we are or not. Um, and yeah, let's get this demo going. All right, so basically, I'm gonna make an attempt to kind of explain how this works because it's really complicated. But basically, we have this we have this main Arduino driver program that really, like, in reality, is not doing that much. It's just kind of mapping, setting up the keypad ob objects, the the LCD screen object, and then it has this giant like switch statement just for all the different opcodes. Because um, it is it is practically like a virtual machine, so it has different opcodes for different functions, and there's different functions associated with each of those opcodes, and those are actually all stored and like written in, in C files. So like actually the majority of the code for this project is not Arduino. Like we maybe have what, like 150 lines of Arduino code, everything else. We have like four full C libraries full of like lines and lines of C code. Like I said, we're, we're close to 2000 lines at this point. It's, it's absolutely insane. But basically this is, this is what it looks like. Um, so this is, a, this is one of the games that the chip A can play. It's called Airplane. Um, so as you can see, it is on an Arduino, so the screen updating isn't exactly the fastest, but we have little airplanes flying around, and I think if we do this right, we can actually drop bombs, you know, on the keypad input. I think it's key number, key number eight. If we click key number eight, we can, oh, it's not key number eight. Okay, it's one of these buttons, I swear. Um, oh, there we go, there we go, see, and it drops bombs, um, I think. Basically, you try to not drop bombs on other airplanes, and if the bomb reaches the ground, you got a successful hit, and that's a point. Um, but basically, this is just one of literally like the hundreds of games that the system can play. Um, so we have like Snake, we have Pac-Man, we have like Space Invaders. It can literally play any of that. All you need to do is download like the little like, it's literally just like 200 or 200 like hex characters. Like it's literally like maybe like 10 or 15 lines of, of stuff that you just load into program memory and then it runs instantly because we built the entire emulator. It's absolutely insane. Took a long time to build, but that was one quick update on one project and then I'll, I'll inform you guys on the final I had yesterday. So basically deep in all of this squalor is a, uh, is a review sheet for my artificial intelligence class. Um, 
So we had a ton of material. It was kind of like a like a sampling class. So we went into a oh focus went into a bunch of different topics on a bunch of different things. But basically, we were we got two full pieces of paper to bring to the final. So as you guys can see, we uh, absolutely took full advantage of all of that. Uh, I think we condensed like a 21 page Google Doc into two pages, so you can see like back propagation, all this stuff. Cause like we went into like everything, like supervised learning, unsupervised learning, computer vision, intelligent robotics, like all of that stuff is on there. Like natural language processing. And since it's a sampler class, that's great, right? We don't go into super big depth in any of the topics, but you still need to know them all. So that was nuts. That final was yesterday at 2 PM. Actually very difficult, a lot more difficult than I expected, but we're done with that now. We just have one more military history. Um, that's tomorrow at 7 PM and then I'm out of here. So. Yeah, I'll take you guys along for the rest of the day, see what happens, see what the grind, excuse me, <sighs> see what the grind is really like, not that I haven't shown that before, but also look at this view, like the weather's finally shaping up, it's literally been raining for like the past, I don't know, two weeks, you can see, see Harkness Tower peeking out right there, ah, I'm gonna miss this view, I really am, um, this is, this was a great suite, so, anyways, I'll start reminiscing. Let's roll. I'm on my way to Durfee's. Um, Durfee's is pretty much like the kind of the little all purpose general store on Yale's campus that you can go to if you miss lunch or something. I've been studying all morning, so I have no motivation to go to the dining hall and get lunch. So I'm just gonna go grab some chicken tenders and some caffeine and we'll keep the day going. have been secured. 